Hi everyone, uh, it's my great pleasure today to have with me Professor Judy Hu, who is professor in the Asian American Department, uh, also Chancellor Fellow and Director of the Humanities Research Center. Hi Judy. Good morning. And Good morning. Yes, hi. And today uh, with us we also have Judy's uh, partner, um, Professor of Teaching Mark Walter, who works in the Mechanical Engineering Department. So um, thank you very much for joining me. Hi, Mark. Hello. And, Thanks. Uh, Thanks for having us. Thank you for accepting my invitation. And um, so what are you going to show us today? Well, I'll start off. Um, uh, Yes, it's a bonus. You get professors with uh, teach uh, pr cooking with two professors today, um, and um, uh, we're going to do two uh, different dishes. I'll be introducing mine uh, through my computer with some some pictures that I took, and then uh, I'll move um, over to the kitchen, and, and Judy will have her iPad and to be able to show some of the things that I'm doing. And I'll be. Uh, cooking a, a, a German dish. Um, they're, they're, based, they're just noodles, essentially, um, called Spätzle. Um, and then Judy will talk about her, what she's going to make today. And um, uh, I, can, I can be a spoiler. There, there'll be some, some dumplings. So in some ways, a little complimentary. Maybe Judy will talk about that when she um, is in the middle of her prep. So today we're going to have very international Cuisine from Germany and originally from China, I believe, right? All right, right. so mm -hmm. take it away, Mark. Right. Uh, these are just a, a couple of pictures I, uh, or a few pictures I took this morning. So these are some cookbooks that I have around. Uh, my family, uh, or my parents immigrated um, in the 60s, and um, I was born on the East Coast, uh, and uh, so... Um, born American, um, and they uh, became citizens as well. But uh, all of our other family is still in Germany. And so uh, when I was younger, we would go almost every other year. And then the, the alternate years, we'd have um, our grandparents visiting us. Uh, so, um, so I was very attached to, to the food. And, and, um, and, and of course, my, my mom and, and my dad, as I'll talk about here, um, were uh, also um, still uh, cooking um, some more tr some traditional things as well, um, and one of our our favorites was was spätzle. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, uh, the recipe that I'll be using is right here. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's um, the original. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the original. This was this was um, from a phone call with my mom, probably when I was in in college and I'd moved off campus, and I was like, "Mom, how do I make spätzle?" <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, so, um, so this is what I wrote down. Uh, this is this is probably thirty years old, <laughs> um, and um, and one thing here you can see it's it's not terribly exact. Um, uh, well, I don't use it exactly anyway. Um, so then I thought, well, maybe I should um, have something a little bit more official. Um, so I looked into some of these books that I had picked up along the way, uh, and uh, I'll just flip through a, a couple of pages here. Um, this this one. Uh, well, actually, I'll start with. Um, with him right here, a, a good Schwäbisch uh, gentleman in this picture. Um, so that's the region where we're from, it's near Stuttgart. Um, and uh, we've heard this called the, the Appalachia of Germany. Um, so people are, are fairly cheap, they, they're very resourceful. Um, I, I uh, don't like that more insulting uh, approach there if, if, um, if it's taken that way, um, because this is where um, Mercedes-Benz is based. This is where uh, Porsche is based. Uh, so, um, so there's a lot of technology that came out of the region too. Um, so again, near Stuttgart, and that's where my, my parents were born and where, where most of my, my extended family still lives. Uh, so, um, so Spetzla is really, um, it, it's really from that region. Um, and it also goes further south into Bavaria. Uh, so uh, this is really what we usually make with, uh, with Spetzla um, when I make it um, and the kids, this is what our kids like as well. Um, so here are, this, here are the noodles, the Spetzla, and these are lentils, mm -hmm. a little strip of bacon on there. Bacon always helps, right? Um, and then uh, these are Seitenwulst. So they're kind of hot dogs, but, but um, uh, a little bit uh, crunchier, I'd say, um, and they tend to be longer. Um, so this would be the, uh, one of the traditional meals with Spetzla. 
so uh, it turns out in this book down here, it didn't have a recipe for Spetsla. Um, it's just such a fundamental thing that they don't, they didn't even put a recipe. And, uh, but that picture there is, is, um, is from, from that book. So then I started looking, okay, are there some other ones? Um, so this one here is from this book uh, up on the top here. And uh, this is um, the recipe in a poem form. So, alle die ein Blättle haben, können darauf Spätzle schaben, und der Teig sei sehr und glatt, der von Schlagen Blasen hat. So that's just kind of a little introduction, but, but here is the recipe. You take four eggs, uh, you mix it with some flour, about 400 grams, uh, put a little bit of salt in it, and then uh, you hit it until it has like blisters. So that's it. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Yeah. And then, um, and then this uh, more modern looking cookbook up here on the top. So again, Schwäbisch from, from the, the Schwäbisch region of Germany. Uh, by the way, I probably have a, a stronger Schwäbisch dialect than, than people in Germany because um, I learned it from just speaking with my parents and relatives. Um, whereas people in Germany now, they, they learn high German in school and the, the, the dialect is kind of disappearing. Um, so I wouldn't say I'm, I'm uh, fully fluent in German, but I, I'm, uh, I'm more fluent in Schwäbisch. So um, I still have that. So that, rest, that last book um, uh, has uh, some more exact numbers. And so this is where I'm gonna end up. Um, just uh, people will be able to look at this um, to get the recipe. Um, so this one's a little fuzzy, but, um, but it says for four people, 500 grams of flour, um, that is about five cups. Um, four to five eggs, salt. Um, they use mineral water um, and they use some butter afterwards. Uh, so uh, that's, that's pretty much the same as this recipe here that I'm going to be following. Okay, yes. so professors talk too much and that's what I've just done. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd be ready to move over to the kitchen, I think. Okay, so uh, just a couple things here. So we've got a, a big bowl, we've got our flour. Uh, some eggs. Oh, salt is right over here. And again, that's pretty much it for this for this recipe that I showed there. Uh, one of the things with spetsla that is a little bit uh, maybe more involved, uh, you might want uh, this sort of specialty uh, device here. Uh, this is a, a, a spetsla plus and. Uh, we would put the dough in there, and then we have this press here, which which will push the dough through. So that's how you make the the longer spetzla noodles. We you know what? My mom put one of those into my suitcase as I was leaving for California, just in case, you know. <laughs> I have one right. too, but I use it for other purposes. <laughs> yes. So I have heard it been used to make mashed potatoes to push potatoes exactly yeah you... is there another uh, use that you have no mostly for uh, for that or okay. um, maybe i could try also for pastatelli which is a kind of not really pasta it's made with uh, breadcrumbs uh -huh. and then they come off like you know kind of bread cells when they get out there out of yeah. the device so <laughs> so nice to see that <laughs> We have the same device. <laughs> right. Yeah, I will use this, I'll, and I'll, I'll always use. I'll also use another method. So we spent a year in Germany about five years ago, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to purchase one of those. So we bought this device, and it's just a a plate that fits over a pot, and you put the dough on it, and then you have this little uh, plastic piece, and you just sort of push the dough through the holes, and it doesn't make really long noodles. But these, these pieces of dough just fall out into the pot and cook. So that's the other way to do it. Uh, and the last way is a little bit improvised here. But it's uh, in that poem, they talked about a blet, mm -hmm. a piece of wood. Um, and then you need some kind of a, a knife. This, probably, this might be problematic. But here, I'm just going to be scraping it into the pot this way. So there'll be three ways that I can make these noodles. Try them all. All right, so I think it's time to put our ingredients in the bowl. And 
going to start off then with about five cups of flour. So I've heard, always heard uh, cooking is not, exact, not necessarily very exact, but baking is a baking is a science. So you can see here, I'm not even going to level this off. I'm just going to dump it in. So there's one. Two. It's the hardest part, losing track here. So got three. Annalisa, what part of Italy are you from? I'm from Bologna. Um, so, you know, it's in between Florence and Milan. And um, it's a university town, city, with one of the oldest universities in the world and a, lot, a huge culinary tradition. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the adjectives for Bologna are um, in Italian, um, la grassa, which means the fat, because, you know, <laughs> because of the amount of food, <laughs> la dotta, which means the learned, because of the university, and la rossa, which means the red, because it's been a a left-wing city for, since the, the end of the Second World War. In fact, it was a communist <laughs> enclave <laughs> before the Communist Party uh, basically Good. stopped right. existing. Interested in hearing more about Bologna yeah. as well. We, when we uh, were in Germany five years ago, we were in, uh, down in Bavaria. Uh, and we, we made several several trips into Italy. Definitely our favorite places to leave, visit. But I'm gonna be done. That's probably not the right term. I'll be putting <laughs> two, two teaspoons of salt into, into this flour here. So, and again, not, not terribly exact there. Okay, we'll use that later. All right. I think that was a half teaspoon. Uh, no, this one was a, was a teaspoon. Okay. Yep. I washed it. Our son made a pecan pie yesterday. He used pretty much every one of our measuring instruments. They were all <laughs> in the dishwasher. Great. Next, we're gonna go with some eggs. I should say also, uh, I always I always use five cups because the kids love leftover spatula. We just we just fry them in a pan, uh, and so this is really a, a fairly large amount to make. Um, but uh, again, we use it as leftovers. All right, onto the eggs. Uh, it says four to five. Really can't go wrong with, with eggs. I, re I remember making this in Germany for one of my uncles, and he just said, put in six eggs or seven eggs. <laughs> of course, I could just go out and grab some eggs from the yard because uh, they were farmers and had chickens running all over the place. All right, so time to crack these. So we learned this from Cooks Illustrated to crack an egg on a flat surface. Wow. And if you crack it against an edge, that it's more likely to create these shards from the egg mm -hmm. eggshell. Sometimes though, you break it and I see a little bit on the counter. So I've recently gone to hitting it on the side of the bowl. And uh, this also shows that I'm definitely not a professional chef because I'd be doing this one-handed, I think. This egg was very soft. So Mark is putting the eggshells into our compost bin, which is quite gross <laughs> with all the vegetables and eggshells that we have in our kitchen. We used to have more of a garden when we lived in Ohio. Uh -huh. And uh, I've heard that your, um, at least one of your kids, if not both, are into cooking as well, right? Um, Somewhat. They, I mean. <laughs> they make a mess. <laughs> they like to cook without doing any of the cleaning. <laughs> yeah. Actually, both of them have gotten into it a little bit. The pecan pie from yesterday was quite good. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, with the pandemic, I don't know about your kids, but mine uh, are desperate for some kind of activity. So particularly my daughter is always helping with the cooking and and then when I'm having my meeting, she wants to do it by herself. And the <laughs> most <laughs> incredible things happen in the kitchen. 
One of our kids um, received a cookbook for kids, and he just loved the idea of making this one recipe. It's supposed to be the best pasta in the world, <laughs> and it was pretty easy. <laughs> so Mark is just getting some water for the, yeah. the noodles. I'll come in for a close-up. Yeah, that's great. All right, so I have had some more professional relatives uh, tell me that this forming this little uh, dip in the bowl is, is crucial. I, I don't really follow why. Uh, it's all going to get mixed up and beaten together. Okay, so, so this is where it definitely takes a little bit more feel. You saw that I wasn't very exact with the flour. Uh, the egg size varies a little bit, um, but it does in my recipe, in my, my carefully written out one here, I have written down, uh, start with one and a quarter cups. Uh, so clearly if you're gonna use less flour, you're gonna start with, start with less, but it seems to be about a quarter cup per, per cup of flour. Um, and the water is cold, room temperature or warm or what? Yes, good question. I, so our refrigerator or ice maker is uh, broken. Uh, there's a class action lawsuit against Samsung for this, but uh, uh, I have the parts to fix it, but I haven't done it yet. Uh, so we have no ice. Um, I don't think that it's necessary to have ice water, but I do use a cold water. So I went to the refrigerator and I got just out of the filter, which is a little bit cold. Mm -hmm. Definitely not not warm. I will mention this later when we when we talk about cleanup of the the machine and the bowl here that we do not want to use hot water to wash those because that dough will stick. You you may have that experience making if you make pasta yourself. Yes. I mean, to come in for a. Do you want to tell people what you're looking for in terms of the consistency? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is one of the challenges here is that um, uh, you want to kind of get it about right from the start because it's really hard to mix water or flour into a dough that that isn't quite right. So if it's too dry and I and I and I go too far here, um, it, it might be hard to mix the additional water in. And the same thing, if this gets too watery, it's hard to mix additional flour in. So, so I'm looking, looking to be able to get this into the, the right sort of texture. And this is a little bit dry and I, I did use all my water. So I'm gonna go and grab a little bit more water. How old is your daughter, Annalisa? Uh, she's seven. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice that she wants to experiment. Oh yeah, she's uh, she's great on experiments. And the other thing she likes is actually experimenting with electric circuits and everything <laughs> electric or mechanical. So she has a kind of engineering <laughs> or That's side terrific. to her. So, you know, now here, for instance, I have this wonderful thing on, on the counter that she tried to uh, open up with this <laughs> screwdriver. <laughs> so that was the purpose of getting this, uh, this dog <laughs> to open it up with a screwdriver, not to have it play or play with it. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so I'm kind of looking for this to to kind of stretch through. Yeah, looks good. Yeah, I feel like I might have actually put in too much water. Mm -hmm. I hope this doesn't go back and forth all morning long here. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm going to dry it out a little bit. Just sprinkle some flour on. So here's the other thing. Is there a machine that will make this? <laughs> um, could I be doing it in the in the KitchenAid mixer with a dough hook? Um, uh, maybe. Uh, it's 
just not the way we do it. And uh, this is the other thing with this dish is that it was always my father's job to, to make the dough. And uh, this is looking a little better. There is, there's leeway in this too. So sometimes my dough might be a little bit, a little bit looser, a little bit stiffer. If it's really stiff, it's, it's hard to push this together. Yeah. But in general, the, the noodles always come out fine. Uh, hopefully, be not, not be the case here. Okay, so, so I'm getting pretty happy with this. Uh, but this is where the work begins. And I've really got to beat this for a while. So it's not showing these, these blisters that the poem referred to. And so I'm going to keep on beating this up. I'm going to go ahead and get started on the other dish. I thought this is a way to think about comfort food. So comfort food noodles, comfort food dumplings. Um, I actually don't remember making dumplings when I was growing up. I think my mom did a lot of cooking and I was doing a lot of helping but I don't really remember the full recipes. I've been using different websites to learn Chinese recipes that I remember eating. And this is from a recipe from a, a website called Marion at Home. She also does YouTube videos. She's this beautifully dressed um, Thai Australian woman. Um, she has like white clothes when she's cooking. <laughs> I don't know how she does it. Um, I've adapted the recipe a little bit. So I'm going to use a mix of pork and chicken, and you can really use whatever type of meat or maybe even the vegetables that you would like for the dumpling filling. I put in about half pound ground chicken, half pound ground pork, and I just like that taste. Our son actually doesn't like these types of meat, so we usually use some sort of fatty beef instead. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not sure how to do this. Maybe I'll switch the camera so it's on me while I'm talking. So these are the other ingredients that are in the recipe. So we're going to put in a half teaspoon of sesame oil. We're going to put in a teaspoon of salt and then two teaspoons of cornstarch to, and also an egg and some chicken broth. Um, and that's going to make the filling. I pre chop some green onions. I feel like this is a lot of the fundamental ingredients for Chinese cooking is green onions, ginger, garlic, sesame oil, those are all you know, kind of staples. And then I'm gonna start making the dumplings. I'm not gonna make the dough like Mark. I really like this particular brand. Um, I've tried other ones, but this one has a, a thinner skin, but it really depends on what um, you know, people's preferences are. So I'll go ahead and, and mix things in and then I'll start making the dumplings. I really missed eating Chinese food in Germany and it was interesting we went to a restaurant near where we were living, and um, I think it was the first year that we were we were there. We spent a summer there, so it was a near a smaller town. And I ordered egg rolls, and they were shaped like German Molotoshen, which is like the German equivalent of dumplings. But there were these kind of rectangular shapes. I was like, "What is this?" Um, so we did a lot of home cooking, um, and Mark learned how to make dumpling skins. Although his dumpling skin was never very thin. <laughs> <laughs> so it's important for the dumpling to be, you know, for the dough to be very thin, right? I do, but I was just reading online that it really varies by region. So people in the north, I think, like the thicker skin, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then people in the south like the thinner skin. And you can get a variety of skins when you go to Chinese grocery stores or Asian grocery stores. So I think it just depends on what people like the most. I just put in, it's kind of weird to do this um, directly into the camera, but I just put in some, um, some egg and do need this without the water. But I remember I grew up in Spokane, Washington. I was born in Taiwan. My family had migrated from mainland China to Taiwan during the forties as part of this politically motivated exodus from China. And we moved to the United States in 1975. And I grew, I grew up in Spokane, Washington. But I remember my parents always having parties uh, with other people who were other Chinese immigrants who either worked there and lived there or with international students. 
And so we would have these big parties where people come together and make dumplings and kind of celebrate together. Actually, you know, my daughter's best friend since her first day in um, preschool, uh, well, her parents are originally from Taiwan. And honestly, I didn't know much, not that I know much more now, but uh, getting to know them, the parents and the family, was a great experience for us also in all respects because they are still very close, the kids and they are, but we discovered an, a very common passion for food. <laughs> so food is a big theme, <laughs> big part of their life, just as it is for us. And also they told us very interesting things about um, the relationship between Taiwan, China and in a sense, the fact that they are more traditionally Chinese than the Chinese <laughs> because of the uh, different effects, let's say, of the revolution. Yeah, it's, um, I think because I'm really interested in Pacific Islander studies and also increasingly about indigenous studies, it's, it's just interesting to think about Taiwan as a site of settler colonialism because it has been throughout the 20th century and, and later with the Portuguese, the Chinese, um, the Japanese, and then even that exodus I was talking about, um, that's where the, the Republic of China was supposed to be located since the 1940s. And for a long time, the United States would not recognize socialist China, they would only recognize um, the Republic of China. But there were people already living on Taiwan. So they had migrated centuries ago or they were indigenous people to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the, the politics are very complicated to think about what does it mean to be Taiwanese and then who, who gets to claim that land. As a kid, we would usually just boil the dumplings and that's what I'm gonna be doing later. We, I don't know, we'll see how much time we have. Um, and the way you cook it is that you boil the water, you put in the dumplings, when it boils again, you put in some water, you do that three times and then they're done. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe because I'm using thinner skin dumplings, I just do it twice and that's enough for it to be finished. And then as leftovers, then you would fry them in pots. So that's the I idea see. of pot stickers. Yeah. Oh, right, right, but my right. kids kind of like a combination. So um, when we finish, we'll probably do some pot stickers and we'll do some boiled dumplings. I never was as much into the steam dumplings, but that's mm -hmm. the third way that you can, you can make them. So I spent well, some, a little bit longer, maybe you heard me in the background kind of beating this up again. So what I'm looking for is uh, some smoothness in the dough. Um, and you can see, if you can, like here was a blister. If I just kind of move this around, you can see I can get bubbles and around the corners there, the way it's pulling off. Yeah. So that's about, yeah. Yeah, there was an air bubble right there. Okay, yeah, air bubbles is another name for it. This one's definitely a little bit thinner than, I, than I'd than i like, but, it, but it, it should be fine. Okay. All right, so there's another step here, and that is that, well, I have a couple things. I forgot to mention this was my grandmother's spoon. Mm -hmm. I was in, in Europe for a year and I was able to live in, in their house. They had passed away, but I also kind of snuck a few things out of the country. So that's uh, one of my favorite wooden spoons. And I, I got this as well. Uh, so because we're going to do this in multiple batches, uh, we clearly don't want to reboil water. So I'll have to fish the spatula out with this. And then I'll be putting it into a le lukewarm bowl of, of water. Ah, so you first boil them kind of and then you put them in lukewarm water. I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 Um, and then right after the lukewarm water, I'll put them into, I'll just drain them. Um, and I'll show you then as they're cooking, like when, uh, when they're done, basically it's when they float up to the top. One of the other things that we do with Spetzla is we put, um, well, you can put either buttered breadcrumbs over the top or some fried onions. Uh, and so I was going to do that while Judy jumps back on. I'll, I'll, I'll sweat some onions. Uh, we get them a little bit almost burned. Um, if you don't want to go through 
that trouble, you can also use the Trader Joe's fried onions here. So, all right, so ready to load this up. So I'll maybe do two, two batches with, uh, with the machine. All right, so. Here we go. <laughs> we're close. So I, I did push it a little bit and you can see those noodles coming out the bottom. So this is made to sort of sit here, but I, I uh, usually keep it up a little bit. Oh, I need one other item here. And that is after, after I pushed it through, I scrape off the, the last of the dough with a knife that I've mm -hmm. dipped in the hot water. Uh, and if you didn't want really long noodles, you could either not load this as much, or you could, you could chop it off in the middle. So, right. But I like to make them long. It takes a fair bit of force. Yes. I have seen many of these machines, the top handle breaks in half because uh, it does take some force. Okay. So I just mix those up a little bit there. This is perfect for small pieces as well. I did use a pretty big pot full of water. It's looking at it now, it looks like maybe it's too much water. Uh, I didn't need to boil as much, I'm kind of wasting energy there. Uh, but uh, you can see they're floating up to the top. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let them come back to a good rigorous boil. They're already all floating. I don't know, maybe on these you know if making fresh pasta, if you can overboil it. I and mean, this is this is essentially just a, a fresh pasta. Yes. <clears throat> the consistency of it is very different. The ingredients you used are exactly the same ingredients that we use for almost all kinds of pasta with eggs, because in Italy you have pasta with eggs and pasta without yep. eggs. But for the one with eggs, it's exactly the same. Uh, but the, the consistency of the dough is different, and uh, I think that is definitely what makes makes it for a different result in the end. But yeah, looks uh, looks great. Yeah, you yeah. can see all the foam forming. Right. So I think it, they should be ready by my you know yeah, definitely <laughs> standards. Yeah, but I'm ready. not. <laughs> and now you put it in lukewarm water. Yeah, we don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know the science with the lukewarm water. That's just one of the things that was always passed along. Mm -hmm. And maybe as a kid, I was in charge of getting that water. Okay. And how long do they have to stay in the lukewarm water? I don't leave them in there very long mm -hmm. uh, because I don't want to cool them too much. Yeah. So I'm going to move them in to drain them off. Mm-hmm. That water, by the way, wasn't very lukewarm. It was a little bit on the cold side. So another reason not to leave them in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other thing that we're doing here is we're doing, uh, well, uh, there is Kesa Spätzle. Uh, that one picture I showed with the long sausages, uh, that was not Kesa Spätzle. That was just lentils and Spätzle. And uh, the Kesa Spätzle is a little bit more from Bavaria. Uh, a little further south, they would start mixing cheese in. Uh, so I'm from Trader Joe's and Emmentaler. Mm -hmm. So I'll just I'll just grate a little bit of this cheese and I'll layer it up and I'll let it, let it try to melt in between the spetzla. And then this is what we'll eat tonight with the spetzla. We'll be eating uh, these are untured Bavarian bratwurst. Got the nice right. Bavarian flag colors. Uh, I don't know how authentic these really are, but. It's okay, the kids like them. All right, so I think I need to uh, put another batch through. Yes. And so this is a bit of an issue that these, these spots are going to, they're going to cool down a little bit much, especially for the Kesa Spetzler approach. I really need them warmer so the cheese melts in between them. I think I mentioned before that we spent uh, uh, an academic year essentially in Germany, in the South, in Bavaria. What about? Uh, it was in Hoyskirchen. So the, there's an, 
don't remember the S, the bond, mm -hmm. the, the, the subway or the, the S, S bond. Three. Yes. <laughs> S3 from Munich, the last stop was Hoyskirchen. Um, so it was pretty far south. We're really close to the border uh, with Austria. Yeah. And so we would, the kids learned to ski there. Oh, yes, that's great. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And uh, of course, in skiing, you need to eat as well. And so they would always want Kesa Spetzla. Yes. Okay. So, so here we go with another batch. That's great. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, a little bit more. I spent 15 months in Heidelberg as an Alexander von Humboldt fellow at some point in my life. So not too far away, uh, but not in Bavaria. Yeah, but that is, uh, so Heidelberg is, actually, I don't know if it's, I'm pretty sure it's Baden-Württemberg. Yes, yes. That would definitely be more the, the, the Schwabish region. Mm -hmm. So much closer to Stuttgart. So I think we mentioned that we were going to try this other approach here. Uh, oh, we've never tried this here. I didn't know it fit so well. So <laughs> we'll do this as well. And then I'll try the, the handmade one. So the handmade was also a, a favorite of my dad's. Um, when we had visitors, he had to show off. He had to, he had to show how you make these by hand. Well, I'm very uh, curious to see that because I can't think of how you do it by hand like that. So I'm curious to see yeah. how you do it. I, I have done it before, but I, I had a little different cutting board and, and I think I had a better knife, but, but it did work. So I hope, I'm hoping here we'll, we'll have some success with it too. Uh, uh, cooks can touch things. This is my favorite part here. Uh, when you get one that's a little extra large mm -hmm. and lumpy, I'm just going right in the mouth. Yes. <laughs> that's good. Perfect. Okay. Anna, Lisa, I know we're getting close to 11. Are you okay with going longer? Well, we'll, uh, we'll definitely want to show uh, the dumpling as well. So I don't know how you want to do that. But maybe we can see. Why don't, why don't I stop? And I'll come back and I'll, I'll be ready to just show these other two methods. Okay, and, okay. and in the meantime, Judy can, can get back to the, her dumplings. All right. So here's the disaster with the meat soup. <laughs> 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 uh, I don't know why. I was thinking three cups, but it's three tablespoons. So here's the... Um, <laughs> You can see a little bit about the kind of the long trails with the meat. So it makes it a little bit more tender. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. And then I'm going to go ahead and start doing the dumpling portion. Let me just grab some water. I guess I uh, can show these a little bit of prep here as well. So these plates. They have some flour on them. The and I just sort of guesstimate, um, I don't know, this might be like a, a teaspoon and a half or so of meat. It just depends on what will, will stay in and not squeeze out. And then I put a little bit of water around the rim. Uh -huh. um, I start at the top. And I pinch oh. a little here and a pinch here. Yeah. And I go to cold. the other side and I pinch here. This looks like it has a little bit too much meat. And I pinch there. Wow. Lovely. I used to do it differently, but I like this shape. Yeah. It looks more like a moon shape. I was reading about dumplings and apparently the first person who supposedly invented them was a doctor and was trying to treat frostbite um, mm -hmm. and so he came up with this concoction that had meat and some medicinal herbs um, and the idea was that it was going to be shaped like a year mm -hmm. 
there's actually like lots of YouTube videos about how to fold. There was one that had like maybe, I don't know, 12 different techniques or so. Um, <laughs> but I just find this like pretty easy. And I, I also like the way they look. They are very elegant. <laughs> it's almost a shame that they're going to be eaten. <laughs> One of my students was saying that they're little pockets of happiness. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, you can put different fillings. You can have shrimp. You can have um, mushrooms. When we were in Germany, um, we actually made mozzarella blueberry dumplings. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we had, would make meat dumplings and then make those with leftover dough and for some dessert. I remember doing this as a kid. It's something that you can do with a group of people. Unfortunately, you can't do it in COVID time. So you just bring everybody together. You mix up a batch of the filling. Um, someone might be making the dough and you can just chat and, and catch up. And then afterwards you all get to eat together. You said that you got to, uh, got to know a, a Taiwanese family. What were some of their favorite foods? Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure about the names, but, you know, wonderful shrimp that gets cooked in the wok with um, ginger and many other things inside and that it is marinated beforehand. Or um, what did they do for us? There was more Taiwanese, um, kind of traditional. Not sure. i um, trying to remember. Um, you know, different varieties of rice. Um, and then what else? Mm. The thing is that now um, the husband is into a barbecue and he has developed supreme techniques. <laughs> so it was very funny because they came to our house when it was still possible with, to see people, you know. Um, uh, bringing all the food and doing a fantastic barbecue there. <laughs> I've never seen guests coming with the food in that quantity. You know, sometimes you bring a dessert or a, or a dish, but not really tons of food. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's just, um, the sense of hospitality. I get anxiety sometimes when we host events on campus and worry that we're not going to have enough food. And yeah. <laughs> I think the, the ethic or um, kind of custom is to always have too much food. Yeah. I mean, it's somewhat wasteful, but it's to indicate that you respect people and then you welcome them and you want to, you want to help feed them. Yeah. And also they did various fried things. Um, so there was chicken that had been marinated and then fried. Uh, there were more shrimps. Um, and yeah, these are the things that I remember from the various um, meetings we had or gatherings. But yeah, the sense of hospitality is a big thing. Um, I think this is also supposed to be a New Year's food. So I grew up in the United States um, and I spoke Chinese at home with my family, but I wouldn't say we were following Chinese customs. But I've, um, you know, I've read that this is sort of something that you start the New Year's with and it's sort of a symbol of you know, fortune, of prosperity. Um, I think of it very much as a, um, like a home food. Yes, but all these dumpling houses that are that are you know popping up, so it's nice to be able to enjoy you know other people's dumplings too. Our helper has appeared. <laughs> <laughs> he may not show himself on camera, but um, Henry, you can turn around and film that. Hi. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm doing something different, Conrad. Uh, you can show the ones that you're used to in the sink. Okay, they're looking pretty good. <laughs> and uh, need the water to boil up again here. 
And so as I mentioned, we're gonna try this uh, perforated plate approach. I don't know if the, uh, the dough can sit too long. I've really never had any issues with it sitting while I was doing other things. All right, how's the water looking? Not quite boiling yet. So while we're waiting for that, uh, so I'm, I'm loading up the uh, this plate. It's going to leak through a bit. Well, it doesn't matter. Connor's going to be wise. <laughs> so this is for our other approach. I don't think Connor has seen this attempt. But uh, I'm going to just put some dough while we're waiting for the water to boil. Put some dough onto this this cutting board here. So yeah, I felt like I had to show these, this technique at least in case somebody wants to try this. They uh, probably don't have the press, don't have a specialty plate like this. So we'll have to see if this, if this approach will work. Okay, good, we're boiling. So, where did the... Have you seen the plastic? There it is, on top of the cheese. All right, so here we're just gonna be pushing this through the holes here. So again, we did this in Germany. Can't tell what's going on there. Just trying to work this through. And I need to grab a mitt as well. All right, get some boil over in there. Do they come out as long as the ones you did before or are no, they shorter? No, mm -hmm. these come out very short. Why? And uh, again, this is something, this is more in the south where you find them uh, in this more short form. Mm -hmm. This is harder than I remember from when I did it in Germany. And it could be that I should really have a slightly thinner dough. Definitely more work than, than the press in the end here. Yeah, the press is a great tool. I just love it. Yeah. I use it at least once a week to do really? mostly mashed potatoes. <laughs> yes. Uh, particularly, yeah, so go ahead. No, particularly right now uh, with the colder climate, even if we are in Southern California, so it never feels too cold. But um, yeah, my kids love mashed potato and so I make it. That's interesting. The, uh, so that's it, Northern Italy. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put these, uh, this little bit in here still too. So you can see I'm just cutting off small pieces. Yes. Uh, one of the, well, this is maybe the hallmarks of my own family, but I think uh, they, they grew up, they were, born during the war, and then right after the war, tough times, of course, and my grandparents never wasted anything. So that would certainly not get wasted there. Okay, so uh, Conrad, are you seeing what's going on in there? Uh, it looks like it's cooking. <laughs> yeah. But uh, size-wise, it's different, yeah. You can see, I think, I think because the dough is maybe a little bit stiffer, 
they they came out really short or more like little drops. Mm -hmm. And so with a, with a slightly thinner dough that would be easier to push through, I think you'd get lo uh, slightly longer pieces, like maybe more like that. That's more of a typical Bavarian Spetzla that they would do case of Spetzla. Yeah. Okay, so we can take these out. They're definitely edible. Okay, so we'll go ahead and, um, well, you know, I think I don't want to get these other ones wet again. I think what we'll end up doing is reheating them somehow later and adding some cheese to them. Okay, so this is the, uh, our younger son's famous capybara plate. <laughs> Painted at uh, Color Me Mind. Okay, so that's actually a pretty nice helping there. Mm -hmm. And I'll put those in there. And so there's your difference. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to do the real big experiment with uh, the hand unchopped. Okay, so I usually use a, a smaller pot with less water. Uh, but I wanted to do it here because I need to be able to, to dip this into the pot and then chop off on, uh, or, or kind of try to take a little bit of this dough off at a time. So um, let me go back to a minute because it's kind of hot. This might get in the way of the technique. Uh, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> okay. All right. So I want to be able to chop into there like this. And I have to get my knife in. I see. Yeah. So in this way, this way you end up sometimes with some really thick ones. Okay. But that's, that's the idea here. And uh, it's kind of working. I have to keep <laughs> it thin here, so I have to keep pushing this back. This is actually, uh, I've not done this in years. And again, the, the real fun part of this is just how different the different uh, different shapes you get get those kind of thick ones that are also uh, lots of fun to Won't that lead some of them to be like undercooked while also others are overcooked? Okay, we're getting a question from the gallery here. <laughs> from the assistant. So uh, so yes, will some be overcooked? Uh, I so I guess this goes back to, you know, how long should I really cook these? Uh, I think that, uh, that I'm already maybe overcooking them a little bit. So I'm not too worried about the thick ones being undercooked. And I, I really haven't noticed a difference if I, if I leave it in there a minute longer or not. Okay, I'm gonna go from this side. The last little bit. So I really just like gas. One of my complaints is that they did not offer uh, induction cooktops. I know they have their potential issues as well, but the gas is just seems so wasteful. So much heat going past the pot, heating up the yeah. edges of the pot. So I don't know how it was. I mean, now in Germany, almost every house has an induction cooktop. Mm -hmm. uh, they're much more environmentally aware too about energy efficiency and so forth. Okay, 
Well, there are some definitely some big ones in there. So they look totally different from the other ones. They do, yeah. I think maybe with a slightly better tool in there, um, I might have been able to be consistently a little thinner. But, but actually, I think this will be fine. Mm -hmm. We'll have the uh, assistant try them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I'm letting these really foam up a, a bit. Uh, maybe you know, Annalisa, uh, can you overcook fresh pasta? What oh, happens? yeah, you can. <laughs> okay. You know, Italians like pasta al dente, so yeah. you should be able to crunch it with your um, with your teeth. Uh -huh. And um, and that is, is really something that uh, allows us to tell to tell apart real Italian restaurants outside Italy from the ones that are just Italian restaurants by name. They typically overcook pasta, but. Yeah. Um, Obviously, that is just a cultural <laughs> element, you know. Yes. So, but on a fresh pasta, it, 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 will, it will be crunchy, too, because I don't know. We, we occasionally do other well, things. Well, it, it's not really crunchy like the, the one without eggs yes. or uh, the, 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 so the dry pasta, but um, it's not mushy. it remains thick, thick and you can actually, you really have to chew it. It's not that it's slimy uh, and um, and uh, with no consistency once you put it in your mouth. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, take a look at wow. this. Yeah. So definitely a little bit on the thicker side for some of these. Uh, this one in particular is pretty huge. But uh, <laughs> you can always okay. eat it. <laughs> okay. Let's see what the assistant says. You know, I'll get another big one. So cook through. <laughs> I don't know. Lisa, I'm just going to show you the cooking techniques for pot stickers, and then we can call it a wrap if that's okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to show you two different ways of cooking. Um, so I have the water boiling over there, but here I just have a pan, and I I guesstimate I try to fill the bottom with a thin layer of oil, just so the pot stickers don't stick. I'm waiting for it to get hot enough to start putting them in. Um, and then once I put them in, I'm just waiting for the bottom to show a nice brown um, sear. Then we put in some water and steam it. So basically that's pretty easy. And then this is the other technique I was telling you about. Here's the boiling water. I'm gonna put in some dumplings. And once the water no longer boils, I'm waiting for it to come back to boil. And I'll put in some water. I'll do that twice and then that'll be done. Wow. So usually I would have three plates available. Mm -hmm. um, I count them. So there's like 18 on each plate. Um, but I didn't make the whole thing yet today. So I usually put in one plate for the boiled and then two for the pot stickers. Although, I don't know, the kids sometimes like the, like the pot stickers and sometimes they like the boiled gums better. What do you prefer, Connor? Uh, I like the boiled ones better, I think. And you can tell when they're ready because they will float to the top like the other pasta that Mark is talking about. Yes. It's still boiling already. I think because there's not as many pot stickers. I'm going to turn down the water. And we'll see when they float to the top. Just an update on those really thick spatula. I've almost eaten all of them out already. I really like them. <laughs> it turned out pretty good. Uh, but then again, I didn't have much for breakfast, so this one will eat on. <laughs> I think this is not quite ready yet. It doesn't feel that hot. What kind of oil are you using? I'm just using canola oil. We have a bunch of different types here, but I think for Chinese cooking, I think some sort of canola oil. Okay. And what are some other ones that we used? Well, we use a, a lot of oil. oil. There's, um, this is the Trader Joe's jar because it mm -hmm. has that spout, but we fill it with the, the Costco olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we don't buy the 
the most expensive olive oil for, for the general kind of frying and cooking things. But then uh, this one, it says Italian. <laughs> so, Probably it is. It. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. <laughs> yeah, so this fancy bottle might be in a salad or something that's uh, not been cooked. So if you um, come over here and look, the dumplings have floated to the top. So I'm just going to put in some water. Maybe, I don't know. I'm just guesstimating these days. I think in the past people have said a cup. But basically you just want the water to not boil anymore. And when it comes back up, you need to put in some more water. This is feeling a little bit more promising now. There's a little bit of sizzle when I put it in. Too much so I'm going to turn it down a little bit. <laughs> we can see that Mark is enjoying the spatula already. I <laughs> put <laughs> uh, all three out here. Wow, look at that. Yeah, a little, a little less left on the handmade ones, but maybe I didn't. <laughs> the, first ones. the three different sizes <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and quantities. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but the, this is, well, I actually don't know how many pounds this actually would have made, but, but Conrad here, the assistant, he'll eat uh, about half of this um, for a meal. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be giving away the secrets and he'll, he'll just eat them plain. It's just about right for a family of four. <laughs> yeah. So you can tell that the dumplings are up again and it's boiling. Yeah. So I'm going to put this in. And then after this time, it should be done. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting a little bit more water because I'm waiting for this to brown. Take a look. So there's a sear, but it's mm -hmm. not brown yet. This skin, uh, this skin broke. Sometimes I think when the dumpling skin has dried out, it'll do something like that. So then I'll just, if I, if it's near the edge, I'll just put a little more water around it so it gives it a little bit more moisture and flexibility. It's starting to get a little bit browner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, they're floating to the top already, so I'm going to turn this off. Mark's right, already taking the other tool, so. These are ready to go. These are ready to eat. Wow. I wish I could be there. <laughs> <laughs> and try. I haven't had lunch yet. No. Um, so for the sauce, wow. I, um, yeah, these look like they might be ready to go too. Let's take a look. That's nice. Yes. I could go a little bit longer, but this looks pretty good. Um, Maybe I'll just wait one more minute on that. Um, so I was going to say for the dumpling sauce, what I use is I just kind of have a mixture of sugar, vinegar, soy sauce, and sesame oil. And there's different variations, but it really depends on your, your taste buds. And I also really like hot sauce, so I'll put that in even though the kids, I usually put that in separately because the kids don't like it. So that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll go ahead. Mm -hmm. So I've got a lid handy. And I've got my water handy. This is the highlight. That's great. You just steam that for, I don't know, I usually steam it until the, the pot sticker, the boiling pot stickers finish, but they're already done. <laughs> so maybe four minutes or so, or until the water sort of evaporates. Yes. But that's basically it. It's pretty simple. It's a really nice meal. Well, sounds so... Sounds so 
cozy so, and um, yeah you yeah, said you exactly. the theme was comfort food and thank you so much for showing all this for opening up your kitchen your family so we got to know a little also uh your assistant uh, <laughs> and uh he's very crazy with the ipad camera there was no lighting on the other side yeah <laughs> it really thank feels you. like home yeah yeah, this is how we would have finished these off. And um, I do have just another little bit of dough. So we're gonna ask the assistant here, what type should we make with the remaining dough? I thought you were gonna ask me to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we, I don't think you wanna eat that raw. Yeah. Uh, um, I would like to try more of these handmade ones. Oh, there we go. Wow, okay. you see? All right, so we'll finish those off after off camera. And then, and actually, as I mentioned before, we, we could make, make cage spets so by rubbing that in. I would make uh, possibly some breadcrumbs with butter, mm -hmm. quite a bit of butter, that's why it was out. And we just sprinkle that over the top. Uh, and then we might eat this with sausage, lentils. Uh, gravy is a big one. Um, Spätzle muss it schwimmen meaning that your, your spätzle have to be swimming. And so the, the, uh, a Schwab, a Schwabish people like a lot of gravy or sauce with their spätzle. I was just checking my dumplings again. <laughs> Are they going with the ones on the stove? Wow. They're called pots because they really do stick to the pot. Uh-huh. Actually, that's, that is the um, kind of Chinese translation. What here? Uh. <laughs> This is the most important part. Yeah. You don't want these broken. Yeah, exactly. That's why I usually have to do it. <laughs> I'm impatient. I just want to eat. <laughs> Here's a nice sear. Wow. They look wonderful. Now yeah, we're going to eat well for brunch. <laughs> so with these wonderful dumplings, we have the full variety, boiled dumplings, fried dumplings, <laughs> all kinds of spätzle. So again, thank you so much, um, Judy and Mark and Conrad, right? Yes. yes. Yes, for filming your parents. And as you can <laughs> see in the meantime, my daughter has arrived too. So it's time for lunch, guys. Enjoy. Nice. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank Bye. you.